Conversation Hat Podcast. Welcome to the Conversation Hat Podcast. This is a basically a comedy podcast for freaks, weirdos, artists, creatives, and terrible, terrible people. Such terrible people as myself, Ben. Hello, people. Terrible and otherwise. And that loser over there. What's your name, loser? Is it Liam? I bet it is. It's Liam the loser. Can you believe this intro is unscripted? Shut up. (laughs) That's my line. This is the high quality entertainment you can expect from the Conversation Hat podcast. Ben, are you well, my friend? My friend? I've never said my friend before. I'm sorry. Carry on. I don't think you have. But yeah, I'm doing okay. Um, I've had a trapped nerve in my neck for the last like three four days which sucks because it's still there but not much so i've got most movement but occasionally i just pull funny faces and make noises at the people going past me is that not it's pretty normal yeah yeah that's on brand for ben surely it is how are you doing i'm good i have all i don't care liam it was a ruse (laughs) i couldn't give a toss i was going to like rub it in how I have all of my upper body movement, but you've gone and rumbled my upper body movement brag. Yeah, I have. <laughs> um, sitting very patiently, wondering why he ever agreed to do this, is Richard Sandling, comedian, film and VHS enthusiast, host of Richard Sandling's Perfect Movie. I fucked up your surname there, I'm very sorry. Host of Richard Sandling's Perfect Movie, who has appeared in Peep Show, Catherine Tate Show, and Zapped on Dave, where he punched Steve Coogan in the face. Woo! Quite a CV. How's it going, Richard? Very well. Hello, hello. Welcome. Hello, hello. hello. Welcome. It is fine. Oh, it's all right. I have one of those surnames that uh, isn't weird, but when you stop and think <laughs> about it, nobody else has that surname. So everyone doesn't quite know how to pronounce it. Everyone's like, Sandling, 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 Sandling. So it's one of those, I don't know. You know, I didn't think it was weird. And then. We, were, we basically we had one of those. It's one of those surnames where uh, you can't. We know if you phone for a takeaway, they go, "What's the name?" You used to always go Sandling, and then they would just go, "What Sandling? What?" So that's in the, now just uh, Richard because it's just easier because you know before you'd be official and perfect, but no one could no one could understand me when I said it or pronounce it back to me. It's also how I know I'm going to get a tele sales call because <laughs> they, <laughs> they get, is that Mister Sat Sat Sats? And you go, "Well, this isn't someone who knows me." <laughs> um, I had a friend who uh, I went to school with. Her name's Alex. She went to university in Edinburgh, I believe. She had to use a fake name when ordering taxis because her last name was Haggis. <laughs> so people, she'd ring up taxis or takeaways, and people would think she was taking the piss. Yeah, because her, her initials were A Haggis, <laughs> <laughs> and then her sis, her sister Megan went up to visit. And she couldn't book a name, uh, couldn't book a hotel room under the name M Haggis. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Wow, um, Richard. So I, I sort of gave a um, a brief overview compiled from your website and your Twitter bio. Um, <laughs> I don't do research; it's not my job. Um, well, yeah, what, what is it you do? What what are you up to currently? Can you tell us a bit about Perfect Movie? Um, yeah, I'm asking for more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, excellent. Well, it, you know, it's, it is absolutely my pleasure to talk about myself. Uh, Please do. <laughs> so, thank you for this opportunity. Uh, <laughs> my parents are getting very tired of it. So, <laughs> uh, well, yeah, I'm a comedian, filmmaker, that sort of thing. I used to be a comedian first of all. Then I gradually moved into acting, but I've always been into film. As a film was always my my passion, but my mm. sort of creative outlet became performing more than that but then I always add video and like multimedia stuff in my comedy so uh, I had a show in 2009 I started up called Perfect Movie which was like a film based comedy show where we'd recreate people's favourite movie scenes and talk to acts about and every act had to do material about films and now because of the lockdown and like live streaming being a thing I've brought that back sort of weekly as a lockdown live stream treat for everyone to watch on uh, via Facebook and then Uploaded to t- uploaded to YouTube days later, where YouTube just go, oh, it's got copyright in it, and twelve people yeah. watch it, and it's a c- complete waste of time bothering with YouTube anymore. But the Facebook Live stuff's really fun, <laughs> so Good. check that every Saturday night, nine o'clock uh, UK time. Join us; it's going to be great. 
Amazing. Um, so how long has the um, the Facebook version, the live stream version, been going on? Basically since the start of lockdown? Yeah, I think we'd like done six or seven. I can't, God, I can't remember. Like, I, think we, I think we started in... We did some in May. We've done all through June and now into July, so that should be quite a nice one. Uh, but it's been just weekly. It's quite a stress because obviously I've got a friend who helps me with the tech, uh, but it's been quite a steep mm-hmm. learning curve. It's like, you know, oh, man. three months ago, I didn't even know what Zoom or OBS was, and now I'm live streaming every oh. Saturday night, and I've got a Kofi account, which I don't even know how to pronounce, but I still have one. <laughs> uh, I've only ever seen it written you're, you're down. You're a Ben. Kofi, yeah, Kofi, Kofi my coffee, event. I don't know, but just, you know, donate to it. Richard Sandling, please, I need this, guys. I'm not in this for my health. But I've got all this stuff I'm I, now using. I'm doing it all on technology, which is just slightly too old or too crap to really cope with the uh, in- cons- consistent use it re- is, is required of me to work yeah. or try to work from home. So, I thought I had a reasonably high-end PC until I was working from home all the time and now I'm like wow this is melting yeah. just bits of computer dripping out I, is that RAM I don't know I think it used to be RAM but now it's a liquid um, yeah <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I know what you mean um, so I, I have a relatively fancy high end laptop but I have no idea how to use half of the stuff on it yeah. so I'm very much in the same boat like I, I have to do all of this remotely now mm-hmm I never knew how to do it to begin with, and now yeah, I have to learn to... it with no one else here to teach me. Yeah. You used to just rock up to the studio and plug your lav mic in, and you were good to go. Yeah, yeah that yeah, was yeah. it. Now I have to contribute. Now you've got a I screen like share, it. export it as a WAV. Now yeah. you didn't do the loop region. Come on, man. Yeah, I know. So it's, it's a whole. I say it's a brave new world, but it's—I don't think "brave" is the, really the correct like description of the world it is. But uh, it's a very, laggy very new world. Yeah, a laggy new world. Also, it's quite a quite a, a, a standard definition low res world when you actually get down <laughs> to what everything is. You go, I'm playing all this. You've got a laptop. I've got you know high def like, webcam, and I'm doing all this stuff, and everything still sort of exports or like broadcasts at three sixty, and you're like, well, this is. Yeah. Rubbish! <laughs> like, come on. I'm stream. I'm streaming at 6K, but what Twitch does with that is yeah, not my business. Exactly. It's like I'm sort of getting this like lovely fillet steak, and I'm passing putting it into the oven. All the oven does is just smash it into pulp and then stamp on it, and then sort of like <laughs> spit it out the other side. And you go, that's not what I put in, mate. What are you giving everyone that for? <laughs> Richard, mate, where can people find you online? What's the best place for to know what you're getting up to? Well, I'm sort of. I try. I try to be everywhere. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you have to. I know that. I do have an actual it. website, which is just richardsandling.com, which is where I kind of have all the information that you will need that has links. Uh, if that's too much of a bother for you, then I am on Twitter at squat underscore Betty, because I am one of these people who, <laughs> whenever I come up with a name, I never really think it, any of these things going to last. So I never come up with a sensible username. So there's always underscores or stupid things like that. Uh, but squat yeah. underscore Betty at Twitter or just Richard Sandling's perfect movie on Facebook. Uh, I am on Instagram, The Sandling. Again, why would I make it easy for you to find me? <laughs> the Sandling. But I don't really tweet. I don't really post much on Instagram, unfortunately, because my phone's rubbish. So uh, right. now it's got my phone is so old, it, Instagram doesn't work on it. So I, <laughs> I can't upload videos and I can only upload one photo. So I can't do stories on multiple things because it won't let me. And I have to go through. Oh, wow. I have to go through Chrome. I can't use the app. Uh, and because Instagram wow. won't let you upload from your desktop like psychopaths, uh, I can't be on Instagram as much as I'd like because you can't go from your desktop, which is insane, and they should sort themselves out. It, <laughs> it is, is a weird insane. thing. I mean, Especially because yeah. they're trying to push um, yeah. Instagram TV and you, you've got to upload your video from your phone. Yeah, it's madness. What? It's like, you know, know. it's good, but, I, but it's one of those things where I don't know if they'll change, but this, I was talking to my friend about this, and I was like, and they're they're quite into like tech and like like the the responsibility of tech to the consumer. And I was like, well, they just don't want me to upload from the desktop. And they were like, doesn't matter what they want; it's what you want. You're the consumer. If you want to go from your desktop, they've got to make that an option if you want it. And I was yeah. like, tell, yeah, tell yeah. me, I've been saying, you know, I've been screaming this to no one forever. <laughs> so, oh, like, screaming into the void. <laughs> screaming into the I void. <laughs> 
amazing right let's let's get into the show before we do that i just want to mention a couple things uh, we have a discord now for all you lovely pod babies pod babies i wrote down on a poster and we decided that's what our listeners would be called and then promptly lost the poster until this morning you're welcome pod babies um are, are we on... calling them pod babies this was your idea mate was it that's what the post it says was i drunk how long I, ago probably, was this? We've been doing know. this for four years and we've not been able to name them. It's an old post-it. I don't have yellow ones anymore. But oh, I don't right. know. Do, pod do, babies, you, like, do you not do. like pod babies? No, I, I do like pod babies and I'm Me glad too. That it was my idea. You're welcome. You, it feels like we're arguing though. Fuck you. This is what lockdown's done to us. <laughs> um, Such is the nature of the internet. <laughs> I think the Zoom calls are just yeah. inherently I feel cursed. like we're arguing, but I don't know why this is an <laughs> argument. <laughs> Um, Discord, there will be a link to join our Discord server. There are places to submit questions to the hat. There is a Patreon-only uh, chat area as well. Patrons, you wonderful people, will also get an exclusive mini-episode. Uh, we're going to record that after this. So if you want even more Conversation Hat podcast, you got to give us that dollar, baby. Uh, never said baby before. <laughs> until I said this is a whole babies. show... The whole show of firsts. For you. I feel Man, like I'm bringing out arc. a different side to a both of you. This is like very exciting to be the, the catalyst for, for for growth and progression. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you want to see a story arc? You want to see where we get to by the end of the uh, episode? You come on our Patreon and you you do the thing with the buttons and the the coherent sentence that I planned to say that had an end. And we're back. <laughs> and we're back. <laughs> Um, I also want to shout out, I swear to God, this is the last one. I've had a band called Pink Lemonade stuck in my head all day because I've been editing a, a episode of Listen to This for StabPounder.com, uh, one of my favourite shows to edit, and yeah, the music's really fun. It's a uh, all-female pop rock, pop punk trio. They make really fun, jaunty music, and it gets stuck in your head. So if you get music stuck in your head, don't listen to Pink Lemonade. Um or if you like music, do. I don't really care. Pull a question out the hat and then say what it says. That's the whole point of this podcast. Well, I mean, we're going to start off with a really strong one. Uh, this question comes from previous podcast guest, Michelle Cu. When dogs go into a lift, what do you, they think is happening? Oh, we're tackling goodness. the big questions here. Um, well, I, I, my, my friend has a dog that I've been spending... Uh, I've spent a fair bit of time with, and I think she's only about six months old. The dog, not the friend. Not the friend, okay. Um, and as far as I can tell, the dog has no fucking idea what's going on a lot of the time. It knows when there's food, when there's water, and when you're not there. Yeah. Because when there's food yeah. and water, it'll follow you because, hey, you've got food and water. When you're not there, it makes little <laughs> noises. Other than that, they don't do much. They just sort of shuffle about and fart. Oh, well, so I don't. So I I don't know if it would have that much. If it was one of those mirrored ones, I think it'd freak out. Because suddenly, can, can dogs see thousands mirrors? of dogs? Yes. Because I thought that I thought there was something yeah. where they're, they're colour blind. I think they can't see colour, or they only see yeah, black and white. Okay. I think so. I yeah, think their vision's based mirrors. on movement. Right, yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know. I mean, I think well, probably the dog. I think the dog. I think the dog's probably fine in the lift. I think yeah. being in the lift doesn't freak it out. I think if anything would freak it out, it would be the going in, and then all of a sudden a door opening, there being another background. But because, yeah. but because dogs have such a sense of joie de vivre, I don't think they would let it freak them out. I think they would just be like, "I'm here now. Yes, let's go." <laughs> you know, it's like I was in. I was downstairs. Now I'm up there. Obviously, I have no concept of downstairs or upstairs. But they'd be like, "I was there. Now I'm there." What's this? Brilliant. These, Someone else to run these around. These doors are amazing. Yeah, because I'd love this. I mean, I think you're a bit unfair dog. I think my, I used to have a dog and they were quite ingenious. Uh, because, you know, like you see those videos of like uh, aquariums and there's like an octopus in a tank and then you just see the octopus sort of manages to escape, crawl out, goes and starts playing sure. the piano, smokes a pipe, you know, like <laughs> plays cards with a with a you know parrot and then climbs back and everyone's like, oh my, the, the secret life. No one really ever does that for dogs, but the amount of times we do things where, like, there'd be a cup of tea on the table, like, on the table, and then you'd leave, you'd come back, and then, like, the cup of tea would have been drunk and knocked over. So the dogs obviously got up on the table and drank the cup, but how did he get out? You know, 
think you go you're trying to sort of Jonathan Creek the sort of the machinations of how the dog did <laughs> everything <laughs> it did <laughs> like there was one time we left a kebab uh, put a kebab oh. in the rubbish and it got in the rubbish and it ate the kebab but it ate, it ate the entire kebab but none of the onions <laughs> so it was just onion on the floor <laughs> where it hadn't eaten the onions and you're like how did it A it's got no hands how did it not eat all the onions it and B, how the did onions. it know that's the correct thing to do with a kebab <laughs> See, yeah. whenever I'm getting a kebab and they ask, do you want onions? I'm always like, what psychopath doesn't want onions? Yeah. <laughs> now I know it's your dog. It's well, your also, dog. it's like the thing about the salad. Go, do you want chilli sauce salad? Go, of course I do. And then the idea is, and then as soon as you leave, you just start throwing the salad on the floor so you can get to the meat. But it feels like <laughs> if you don't get the salad on your kebab, you haven't had the ben- you haven't had the full money's worth of a kebab. Yeah. You, you say <laughs> that there's not been, like, those sorts of things. I think... I think I was flicking through the channels. I say I'm flicking through the channels. I'll be honest. I was watching Naked Attraction, where it's the own dating it. thing own where it, you see you see dick and balls, and then it goes up to tits and then face and then they can talk. It's such awful TV, <laughs> but and you want to turn it off in the ad breaks, but you don't because you want to see which one they pick, and you yeah. want to judge. And it's awful TV, but it's a laugh. During an ad break of that, I saw a new show coming to Channel 4 where what they do is they get little GoPro cameras and they attach them to dogs of celebrities. The dog then fucks off around the house and I think the game is you have to guess what cele- who the celebrity is by what you see from the dog's point of view. I think that would be quite... I mean, that sounds... I mean, that would be a tricky show for me to watch because I'm going to go out on a limb and say... The celebrities that the dogs belong to are not celebrities I would know of. <laughs> so exactly I would, the same I mean, here. I'm sure yeah. there's lots of people uh, who would probably really enjoy that game, but that's one of those games where I would not be able to join in. I am, I am. I mean, I'm not one of these people. I don't hate celebrities. I just don't watch a lot of telly. I don't watch a lot of. Sure. Yeah. I mean that sort of stuff. I and mean, I am one of those people who, that every year when they announce the Strictly Come Dancing list, I genuinely don't know which one's the dancer and which one's the celebrity. And that's not like a yeah. a badge of pride, like. You know, oh, so which one's the dance? Which one's a celebrity? Then, like being all snooty, I just have no idea who ninety percent of the people. Are, unless it's some old actor, you know what I mean? They go, "Here's someone who was big yeah. in the seventies who you've loved forever." Oh, them, you know what I mean? Like if you know if Robert there's Powell a, turned up, like I'd be like, "Oh, Robert Powell's person. in it, brilliant," you know. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. there's maybe one person, and then that's it that you know. Like, um, I'm a celebrity. Get me out of here. Yeah. You're like, I've heard that name before. Don't know where from, but look, John Barrowman. Yeah, everyone else, I've no idea who it is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but I'm he sure was they're in lovely. Doctor Who for a bit. I'm sure they're all lovely, but you know what I mean. Like, I don't hate them. Fair play to them. I just have no idea who they are, so I find these shows really difficult to like engage in. It's like, man, yeah. I swear to God, if they did a come dine with me or something that had like Tom Scar, George R. R. Martin, like dude that played Harry Potter, I would be down to clown, but, like, yeah, I don't know who yeah. these people Unfortunately, are. like, most real celebrities are too busy working. <laughs> yes, <laughs> like, yeah. there is that. And, again, that's not meant to be mean. It's just, like, you know, I haven't got time oh, no, to do yeah. this show because, like, I'm probably going to, you know... Because they... Also, because if these things go up, like, like, Strictly, that's a that's like a sort of 10-week commitment, isn't it? So, like, oh God, if yeah. you actually are someone who might... I mean, that's really good for your career, and, you know, it's a good show to be on. Like, Strictly is one of the ones I would be on if uh, I was ever asked. Uh, but also, because if I said no to it, my mum would kill me, so I have to, you know, I'd have to, I'd have to, like, you know, it's like I couldn't say no to that. It'd be like meeting the Queen. It's like I've no interest in that, but I'd have to, just because, you know, yeah. of everyone well, that would be you furious meet the with me. <laughs> You got to check the stamps are accurate, haven't you? Yeah, well, exactly. Otherwise, who's who's going to do that? I Not know. Royal Mail. <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> Liam God. just starts shouting at Royal Mail for no reason. Look, man, I have grievances. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we all do. Um, I think. What was the question? Bringing it, bringing it back dogs to dogs in a lift. lifts. Um, dogs in a lift. Bringing it back. <laughs> Bring it back. Are you new? Um, <laughs> I I don't know if dogs necessarily give a crap about anything that isn't happening in the immediate two feet vicinity around it like whether or not the person it adores is in that vicinity whether there's food there i don't think it cares where it's going otherwise i mean maybe maybe it's judgmental maybe it would get in the lift and it would think we should be using the stairs mate but i don't (laughs) know yeah i don't know maybe it's like a sort of passive aggressive fitbit (laughs) just gives the sideways look of yeah 
that lift, be more than again, a Fitbit for me. It's I one think. floor, mate. It's one floor. <laughs> What's the point of taking I'm me out? You're early as well. Well, yeah. What's the you're point of taking me out for a walk late. if we're not going to actually do any walking, mate? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's a really coherent answer. <laughs> yeah, I you, hope that's cleared Ta- it all up. <laughs> Take whichever one of them you like, Michelle. You're welcome. The conversation hat with guest. Oh, this is good. Almost like we planned it. Movies that Ooh. traumatized you. Oh. <sighs> Oh, well, this is, I mean, I can tell you, like, I mean, I mean, yeah, uh, pretty much the first, uh, my mum tells me a story, I'd come to, because, like, the first film I ever remember seeing in the cinema was Ghostbusters, and I was, okay. I yeah. was age-appropriate, so I was, like, five to see Ghostbusters, and uh, if you can imagine uh, being five and technically never having really seen a film before, or knowing what cinema is, oh God, or yeah. fantasy is, and then watching Ghostbusters, oh. and then the first thing that happens is the scene in the library with the weird ghost going, <laughs> oh, li- shit. just like <laughs> ran to the back of the cinema, just hid behind the sort of uh, the wall, and then just spent the entire movie just sort of screaming in fear. Uh, to the point yep. where I've watched like so wow. many horror movies, but even like as a teenager, and was like, "Do you want to watch Ghostbusters?" I was like, I don't, "Just don't know if I can. Don't know if I'm ready. Don't know if I'm ready <laughs> to watch like Ghostbusters." Yeah, I did sort of have a sort of weird. Weird Ghostbusters PTSD. Like, it took me ages to watch it again. I watched it, and I love the film now. But that was probably the what that you know the first and most terrifying. The first one you ever watched terrifies you. Doesn't uh, yeah. you know prepare you for it? Yeah. I think uh, yeah, I ain't I, afraid I of no ghost. I think you'll find I am pretty afraid of that ghost. Yeah. <laughs> There's one ghost. There is always one. Yeah, I think I saw that. I saw Ghostbusters at home, and even like. With your parents and the lights on, it's still pretty bad if you're small. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ooh. Uh, um, that's a good one. Classic, I mean, I've had some good classic experiences. trauma. Well, yeah, trauma. I mean, no, but yeah, that is a trauma. I've had some good experiences with uh, like other people being terrified by films. Not. Uh, <laughs> or I went to see. Uh, I mean, you know, that sounds more. That's not as sinister as it sounds. <laughs> but, a podcast for geeks, artists, and terrible people. That's true. I went to the cinema. <laughs> if you can imagine such a thing. Uh, to watch Drag Me to Hell, uh, oh, which, yeah. uh, which is great. But I went to see it on a Friday night, not really thinking it through. So I go in there, and it's just full of kids, you know, like f- sort of 14, 15. Mm. Now, I was in a bit of a stroppy mood because I'm already, like, I'm the sort of person who goes to cinema, and I'm already angry in advance of what people might do. You know, I just I just oh, survey everyone, and I'm like, insane. this is just full of yeah. bell ends. I'm like, I'm done with this. You know, this is going to be awful. Um <laughs> But the best thing was because it was really scary. Or, well, you know, it's really good. It's really effectively scary, Drag Me to Hell, mm. I thought. Like, really, I mean, it's mostly jump scares, but it's still, like, consistent. There's a bit, I think it's in the kitchen with all the pots and pans and the shadow around the window, and I'm just jumping out of my skin, and I'm like, I just don't know if my heart... I genuinely was like, I don't know if I'm well enough to sit through this, this sequence. Like, <laughs> I think I could, you know, could do myself a genuine mischief. But I'm in there, and it's full of 15 years, and I suddenly realised they don't know what scary is. Because at that time, really, other than Doctor Who, which was the fir- with, you know, which was kind of doing old-fashioned scares for kids, everything was kind of sore and hostile. There wasn't really the paranormal activity that hadn't uh. really taken hold. So everyone was used to violent, you know, and gruesome. Yeah, they weren't the, used to like, like scares. The gross out type yeah, things. and then yeah. so they're watching Drag Me to Hell, and they've never seen a film like this before. So what went from me being surrounded by four hundred fifteen year olds and being in a mood went to me being surrounded by four hundred fifteen year olds shitting themselves, <laughs> 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 absolutely freaking out, not knowing what was going on. Popcorn flying everywhere, screaming, at you. <laughs> "Why are you going in there? Why are you going in there? Just phone the police! Why are you going?" You know, <laughs> properly losing their minds over this. It was like the best experience I've ever had watching. Because there's bits in that, you know, if you've seen the film, like, it's one of those films where, as fans of action movies and horror movies and, you know, effective cinema and having seen Sam Raimi films before, there's lots of fun in there to be had from knowing what's coming. There's a bits where you kind of go, suddenly there's loads of negative space. And so you know that in a minute yes. something's going to come in and you're like, oh, that's so... And you're, like, and you're like, you can tell, so you're really excited about it. Yeah, you're like, what's that? And they look... Or they'll, they'll take the phone away and they'll just look off and they'll grab the phone and you know that when they turn around there'll be a face in the phone or something will come out the phone. And I am... Yeah. I mean, it's still effective even though it's coming, but I'm like, oh, that's... I'm like, so I'm enjoying, like, the sort of... 
the like the craft on display, but I'm also enjoying the fact that I know none of them can see this coming. So I'm also going in a minute. Everyone's going to absolutely go mental, and they did. It was brilliant, absolutely. Yeah. Brilliant. So that was everyone else being traumatised, but that was a great experience. Like more experiences <laughs> I, um, like I'm, that, please. <laughs> I'm very similar because I I work in. Um, Music is like my day job, and I, I'm trying to get into um, film scoring and game scoring. So I'm quite familiar with like the same, the similar set of tricks, like the negative space. Something's going to come into that middle third, uh, but from the audio side, so I know if I can hear like a pitch that ever so slightly starts to rise, or if I hear like a voice in reverse, I'm like, there's going to be a face in like three beats time yeah yeah i'm prepared so like yeah the the horror the traditional horror stuff doesn't really get me and i sort of know enough about how you can subvert expectations to be like okay there's going to be two stingers with nothing and then a third one where we're all going to poop ourselves i'm i'm in this is really this is objectively very good from a filmmaking perspective i just ain't scared the um the film that like actually properly scared me and traumatized me and I refused to watch was Yellow Submarine. <laughs> but a lot I, of animation, a lot of animation is terrifying. Like those sorts of things are the blue meanest man. Yeah, can't can't be doing with that. Nope. What's nope, Yellow nope. Submarine? I don't that I don't know it's, that one. So the Beatles had a song, Yellow Submarine. Yeah, yeah, I know. There that. was an animated film based around the concept of Yellow Submarine and. Um, it was like the kind of uh, 60s psychedelic animation style. But then there were these um, characters. They, they were basically like an analogue for a fascist regime, except it's British policemen. Read into that what you will. Um, and they were the blue meanies. And they were just the most horrific things I ever have seen. And it's something about like the weird distorted faces, the, the pitch and the tone of their voice is just massively upsetting and okay. I'm still angry at my parents that they let me be in that room <laughs> well this is the like, thing I mean, what were you thinking didn't they are they still doing or were they I mean, you know when you go did I remember that correctly are they was Robert Zemeckis not doing a motion capture live action motion capture version of that with Peter Serafinowicz playing all the Beatles was that not a I thing? I feel really not. I feel really nauseous at the prospect of was that. Was that not? Was I'm like, sure there was a thing I'm, where I'm Robert like Zemeckis <laughs> was doing like was going to Polar Express the Yellow Submarine. I'm sure that was a thing. I don't know if that still happened. I've, I feel like I've heard of someone doing something <laughs> live action stop motiony, and Peter Serafinowicz was mentioned. Just doing all the work. I, I, mean, I yeah. I don't There's know. information about something in my head about that. Yeah, yes, yeah, so I don't know if that's happened. No, I've not heard that it's not happening. You know what I mean? It's one of those things that was announced. Yeah. It was happening. Then I've not heard anything about it. So who knows? But you say about your like, your parents. That's the thing. Like there were so many things I watched as a kid, which you look back and you go, "How was I allowed to watch that?" Like it's horror. You think, but you think about how terrifying things like Dark Crystal. I mean, it's not traumatizing. It's just mm. really bleak for a kid's like this. Like this notion that because it's a PG, it's still somehow. Uh, fine yeah. for kids to watch it. It's not. It's not always the oh. same. Like Dark Crystal, like all the sort of Land Before Time, so depressing. You know, like mm. oh, but I love Land Before Time. Yeah, but yeah, it's super. It's super. Almost not for kids. For kids. Yeah, it's just yeah. really sad and like melancholy, and it's really <laughs> depressing to watch. But it's great. But the kid, you watch it. You be watching. You don't really know anything. You know, Watership Down. Probably not the best kids film to watch. Oh but you know, every year, yeah. there's stuff in the newspaper saying oh my god Watership Down was on and parents yeah. showed it to their kids and they're traumatised don't show it to your kids but yeah. it's like that thing it's where you, know, you, you get you see it's in the paper you, know, you get the you know I remember when I used to get the paper you know, remember when you used to get the papers for the TV guide remember when that was a thing oh, yeah. do you remember that do, yeah. you, remember, do you remember seasons do you my remember mom, seasons <laughs> my mum still does for Christmas yeah she always she yeah. always gets the radio times for Christmas and goes through with the highlight of her nice She's she's got what like for, a recording like, thing. I wonder what time the Christmas thing's going to be on. All the time, mate. It's Christmas. Yeah, Just turn the telly on. <laughs> have a crumpet. Sit down. Put your legs up. It's Christmas. Yeah. I don't know why I said crumpet. Christmas foods. Christmas food is there. Yeah. But you've always got to have that thing. If you know you're going to watch Watership Down, is you know to know in advance you're going to watch it, so you can have a week to prepare yourself not to cry when Bright Eyes comes on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like, I just need a week to prepare for this. I'm going to be fine. I'm going to be fine. I'm going to be fine. <laughs> like, <laughs> Straight away. Can't cope. But with something like that, like you can't be mad because that's not a new film. 
Yeah. You know what water ship down is. Yeah, yeah. Don't mm-hmm. like pretend it's going to be different this time and put your toddler in front of it. Just take some it's like it's the same as like parents not taking responsibility for what their kids do on the internet. It's like you literally made this person. Yeah, yeah. Everything they do is your problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're basically your avatar. So uh... yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember speaking of the Beatles. I remember there was remember that um, uh, Rupert and the Frog song video that had that horrifying space space woman animated short. Oh yeah, that was just absolutely. Terrifying. I may have repressed. I may have repressed that. And I just remember at the but... time. I mean, I watched it back, and it's not. It's not terrifying, but it's still not normal and for children. Do you know what I mean? It's just <laughs> horror. And I remember at the time that just being horrified. I want to say it's. I want to say. I want to say it's like an Eastern monkfish, but that's not what it is. But there's some name like that where it's like. God. Uh, ben, have you got any trauma you'd like to share? I mean, I know you do, but specifically <laughs> about film. <laughs> um. See, so I wonder. So there's two that spring to mind. One of them is Halloween H2O, because I was staying around my friend's house. Scary movies weren't a thing that were was in my house. Okay. I think I was I was probably upwards of like 16, 17 before I sat through a scary film and wasn't completely... Yeah. So I was about 11, maybe 12, and I was staying around a friend's house. And he had a TV in his room. He put on Halloween H2O and went to sleep. (laughs) I did not sleep for that entire night because it freaked me out so much. I just like sat on my little like sleeping bag on the floor going, I don't like, and I, I could, it it stuck with me for like two weeks that I wasn't okay. with this movie so that was really quite traumatic however i think i'm gonna lean animation white and towards animation as well with the brave little toaster sounds like a lovely adorable kids film right it does yeah oh no my friend i found out many years later that it's based on a book and it's a book series and I think it's meant to be along the similar sort of vein of like maybe not quite as heavy as Animal Farm, but it's all meant okay. to be very sim. It's all meant to be very symbolic. It's not just a happy little chap who makes toast going across the country. It's meant to be sim symbolic and stuff. But it's it was shown to me as a child, and it was one of my favourite films. Except there are some really fucked up bits in there. Within the first five minutes, there's an air conditioning unit that kills itself. It gets pissed off the um the so the guy who owns the house has moved and left some stuff there. The air conditioning unit is pissed off that the toaster, a blanket, a lamp, a radio, and a hoover want to go and find the guy who moved. It gets stressed out, it shouts at them, screams that it's stuck to the wall and deliberately overheats itself and dies. Christ. <laughs> We've all been there. Yeah, that's that's the beginning. <laughs> yeah. Wow, man. I'm assuming that neither of you guys have seen it. No. Amazing. Right. Let's. Uh, I think that's quite enough trauma for one childhood. I feel better. Hands. You've got hands. I've definitely got hands, but hands are uh, weird. They got they that bit. They, they got those that bit sort of bends I mean, I mean they all bend in like one or two ways each and that that's hugely upsetting this one only bends well that one bends in two ways these bend in three ways because they got the the one of them and then they got all the the, the lines and stuff are weird. and um I think my thumb should do that. It hurts when I. Ow. Yeah. Hands are weird. Um, and the the nails. They're not actually made of nail, are they? Otherwise, they'd be grey. Hands are weird. Um, hands are weird. Hands are weird. Hands are really weird. Hands are weird. Maybe it's just mine. I think it's all hands. Okay, this question comes from Almighty Colossus on Discord. I'm pretty sure that's actually his name. How many syllables is too many? How many syllables is too many? 
<laughs> it depends this... on what you're doing with them. <laughs> is this is this a weird like lost verse to how many roads must a man walk down? It's like <laughs> you know when they just they just wow. when you find out that the national anthem's got twenty seven verses, but you only seen two of them. Is this like that? <laughs> like... how many syllables is syllables too much? Well, so ten many would be that too the many. song doesn't scan. I ten suppose... would be too many for that song. Yeah. How many syllables? I mean, it's, again, it depends. I mean, that's a good question, but it does depend. I mean, I I don't know if I can answer the question, but I can offer insight into the problem of syllables. Is please, that do. I please do. do yeah. I also do poetry uh, and spoken word, mainly spoken word, because uh, that's essentially just talking without needing to do jokes. Uh, so I do that. It's like a good bridge between stand-up and poetry <laughs> is spoken word. Mm-hmm. Uh, the talkiest jokes you'll ever hear. So, uh, but sometimes I go ask people to do something. They go, do a haiku. And you know, a haiku is five, seven, five. Well, I've realized because of the way I talk, I can never work out if I'm doing haikus properly because because of the way I talk and I have to overcome like stuttering when I speak. I sometimes roll everything into one. So I, theoretically, it should be, this is one syllable, you know, but I would say this is one syllable and I sort of turn it into two. So it's like cheat. I sort of cheat. I'm not cheating, but I write it down and then I say it out loud and they're not the same thing. So syllables are actually, uh, I basically refuse to be bound by the rules of syllables is essentially what I'm saying. So how many is too many? Don't care. Like it's an abstract notion that is, uh, that is, that is, you know, old fashioned and just, you know, for squares. (laughs) Take that. Almighty Colossus. Yeah, I mean, you're right. We were... You know, that's not a dig at him specifically. He asked me how many was too many. And the answer is shut it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I. What's the most syllables you've ever said at one go, Ben? I don't know. I, mean, <laughs> I don't know what this question is. Anti-establishmentarianism has got a good few syllables. You've missed one. It's an- isn't it anti-disestablishmentarianism? Anti disist oh. that was the thing, it was always <laughs> anti disestablishmentarianism. And then the other one was always people it was all because no one could ever remember what these words were. They would just make up words. Well I or misremember words. So yeah. there was always flocky nocky fullifications, which isn't the correct pronunciation. <laughs> and I think just means and I remember that that was like one of those things where we go, that's just the technical term for making words long without reason. But I yeah. also don't know if that's true. That's just what everyone used to say at school. Like, you know, the definition <laughs> the of a pointlessly long word is flocky knocky fillifications. Like, it's the same logic as when they decided to make the word dyslexic hard to spell. Yeah. So I don't know if that is true. And I'm obviously not pronouncing it properly because I'm remembering how eight year olds used to, you know, smug eight year olds <laughs> that have heard words have suddenly, like, pronounced something. Yeah. <laughs> like how they do the whole. Oh, uh, supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. Spell it. And you go, oh, I can't. You go, ha ha, IT. Spell it. We're so clever. Yeah. I just Correct. got punched a lot in the head. Like, your child Was it because you okay. were doing. Was it because you were saying long words? No, I was just massively unpopular. Is it because you wouldn't stay in the library to play Dungeons and Dragons? Yeah. <laughs> you insisted on bringing it out into the real world. <laughs> There's a reason they have a library. There's all these books. It's not to read. It's for people like us to have lunch breaks. <laughs> we couldn't eat lunch in the library in case we ruined the one book. Yeah. I was slightly unpopular as well, but I was also like allowed to play football, so I was sort of a double agent. You know, ah. I was like <laughs> Infiltrating the allowed cool to play football, but not cool enough to be in anyone's gang. So I was like a sort of very mid-level, you know, is that that's how you make comedians, though, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's just basically you give them a taste yeah. of popularity and then you withhold it. <laughs> yeah. Allow them to be just in enough to feel so like they, know they what want it more is to be loved, and then um, it's basically no just sort of like an entire sort of fifteen years of negging, essentially. Yes, <laughs> it yeah. is. It's basically all childhood is. The conversation has. People seem to hate magicians. Discuss. I mean. Do, yeah, do. I mean, do, I mean, are we, are we, are we, I feel like I am ambivalent towards magicians. <laughs> I think, I think yeah. what it is, people, I think people don't like all the sort of, the sort of show busy stuff. I think, I think, I think what yeah. it is, I think people have never quite gotten over the fact that magic isn't real. And so, 
spoiler alert, uh, <laughs> magic isn't real. So I think that's a big disappointment. So when you see people do it, there's a sort of sense. I think there's always going to be a slight disappointment that you know that what they're doing isn't real. So there's a slight like sure. you're even though you're even though they're saying this is magic, like this is a spectacle. I think you could be thinking to yourself, subconscious back of your mind, you're a charlatan. This is lies, lies. I tell you. Um, and also they're going, look at me, I conjure things. You go, no, you don't, mate. Like I know the whole thing is it's showbiz. <laughs> do you know what I mean? But you wouldn't go, yeah. oh, look at these rock stars wearing their like with their tight leather trousers. You go, mate, come on, mate. Like you just sing your songs in your tracksuit. You wouldn't. You're, you know, but for some not, reason, magicians you're not just, singing that loudly. It's a microphone. Yeah, exactly. You're not really. You know, you're not really. You know, school's not really out. It's Thursday night during term time, Alice Cooper. Like you know, like like what are you doing? This is live. No, there's think, one day a year where that song is accurate. Yeah, exactly. I think he's made his money. It's great to have a song that's, that makes you loads of money one day a year. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, Mariah Especially Carey. When, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I, I don't know. But the thing is, the magicians, You, I mean, I love I love magic. My favourite thing about magic is, I do like watching magic because you see it and you go, this is great. Like, I love the fact that I don't know how it's done. I mean, I'm sure you could work it out, but I love the fact that they're clever enough to make it look like it's really happening. I think that's genuinely oh, yeah. great. But I think there is that thing where you see, like, anyone who's too, like, gothy and moody and, like, you just go, oh, Chris like, Angel. Up. Yeah, yeah, mm. like, that kind of thing. You just A lot of the stuff with Magician just makes you go, oh, grow up, mate. Regardless of what it is, it could just be the old guy, the you know, the old guy doing the sort of proper top hat and cane or, like, your David Blaine's, like, I'm going to do. Then you go, oh. You know, I know it's not magic, but that's why Darren Brown was so good when he came out because you kind of mm. went, he's saying, I'm not psychic, this is all psychology, but I'm still going to do the like yeah. the magic tricks like magic. Magic right. isn't real. Here's me doing some magic. Yeah, and it was worked really well because you go, I still believe, you know, I still like, I still get the benefit. But he's going, I'm going to tell you the psychological trick. You know, there was something like that was really nice. And also, Penn and Teller. I mean, everyone loves Penn and Teller. I don't know anyone that. I mean, I yeah, think yeah. Penn and Teller would be the. I mean, everyone loves Penn and Teller. I can't imagine mm-hmm. there's people who, unless you know they have a personal grievance with them for whatever reason. I can't imagine there's people who've seen Penn and Teller do anything and go, "Yeah, it's not for me." Like, not for, not my know, cup of tea. I think everyone goes, "This is great." There's some stuff they do which is brilliant. You know, I like love it. But I think you know, if every, I think basically all magicians need to be Penn and Teller. That's the answer. Yes. Then then, then no one would then no one would hate them. The um, I wonder if. <laughs> reason people have problems with magicians is because they know objectively the things they are doing are possible but they can't work out in their head how something is being done and i can yeah. i can understand why that would really and it makes you feel stupid because people don't like to be made to feel stupid despite the fact that it's yes. easier just to double down on being stupid than do anything to better themselves uh, well yeah <laughs> you know, quite. you're an idiot don't call me an idiot well you know I, what are you gonna do about that i'm gonna be twice as idiotic now just to prove you wrong well that helps neither of us because, that shows uh, you me know, and so, the environment. Ugh. Yeah, I know, I know. Am I right? Am I, I right, am... guys? Am I right? Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, I'd love to mention um, Magic for Humans, a show on Netflix, and I can't remember the name of the comedian, and that's really annoying me. But it's um, it's ostensibly a magic show, but it is delivered hilariously. So there are magic tricks, but the the guy who performs them is really, really funny, and it's. I think produced by um, Tim and Eric of yeah Tim and Eric of show. Tim and Eric. So Good. like, so it's edited in a very Tim and Eric kind of way, mm-hmm. which is just perfect. So there's some really bizarre janky cuts, lots of like jokes that shouldn't be jokes, lots of weirdness. So um, yeah, Magic for Humans on Netflix is. Um, is a really nice time. I mean, set. I've had some lovely time watching magic. I actually do quite like magic. It's not something I specifically go to watch, but I've got friends who do magic, and I've always enjoyed their stuff. Like, I think it's really good. But I suppose it is just disappointing to realise it's it's all it's all a sham, isn't it? It's all a sham, which I suppose must upset people. But I, but I don't see why yeah. you would you know they shouldn't be singled out as being like the one art form that doesn't get a pass for doing the <laughs> the admin of the job as spectacle and performance. Yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean? So uh, you know why did the chicken cross the road? Actually, chickens never cross the road, mate. Like, don't, don't, like, don't even, don't waste your time. You know what I mean? You don't. Well, actually, you do online. You do get that. You know. Uh, actually, chickens never cross the road, mate. Never cross the road, right? Yeah. You know what? You, you think you think crawling to animals is funny? Do you think road safety is a joke? You know, like sick of me. Why don't you just? Why don't you just like? You know, just, uh, yeah. So I suppose you do get that online, but. Uh, Bloke goes into a pub with the giraffe. No, he didn't. Shut up. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're yeah, lying to me. You're lying. Yeah. 
Oh, you know how you know how you can tell a comedian's lying. Uh, it's when they say yeah. true story. Generally, yeah. generally code for this never happened. But if I don't caveat yeah. it with some semblance of truth, it will seem it will be too. The internal logic will be too implausible to enjoy. <laughs> I swear this is, that is like true. When, That's um, great. <laughs> I swear this needs to be believed, yeah. otherwise everything falls apart. <laughs> <laughs> I like when people are saying, well, apparently, in America, if yeah. anyone mm. says apparently, particularly if it's followed up with in America, yeah. chances are they have no idea what they're talking about. Yeah. I saw yeah, what a you've thing. watched there is a TV show, my friend. Yeah, Not I saw a thing. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, with magic, I think it's a bit... I enjoy... As an ex-member of the Young Magician Circle... Ooh. Humble um, brag. Humble brag. I really en I enjoy not knowing how they do stuff. Because I can sit and, like, I was on holiday and there was a magician and we sat and watched him. And I could work out how he did almost everything mm. apart from one, like, his big finale act thing. That I couldn't work out how he did exactly how he did it or even just... I could have a tiny bit of an idea, but then I wouldn't be able to prove that unless he did the entire show for me again. I enjoy those bits. That's why I like Darren Brown. Um, yeah. Because, as, as as you said, Richard, there's no... He, he does... He's just like, yeah, I can't do any of this. But then he goes and does it, and I don't... And he does the bits that he doesn't explain, I can't get my head around how you start to do that. Card tricks, sleight of hand, things are already happening before... You are told they're happening. Misleading, mis misdirectional stuff. That's all stuff that I can understand and to a degree figure out. But then you're making the t table fly across the floor when some little old lady who's just randomly there picked by someone else, by someone else, by someone else, and it's flying. What the fuck? Yeah, yeah. How did you do this? Yeah, I always remember the... Uh, yeah, I always remember like, there was a Jack D... Used to do, I think it's one of his live videos about uh, David Copperfield and stuff like that. And it's like, he's flying, he's flying. Is he? Is he? Let's go in the car park and see him fly, shall we? Yeah. <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? It's like, no, he can really fly. And it's like, I think it's, I think it also, it's like when people like get carried away, he, oh my god, it's amazing. David Copperfield can really fly. And then you have, then you have to suddenly go, no, he can't. It's all, and then you have to basically, yeah point out that someone who believes it is foolish, which then ruins your own... Because you're happy to just go, that was incredible. You know, that was an incredible thing I just watched. But then some people yeah, yeah. really like it. You then have to go, well, of course he's not really fun. Then you have to basically disassemble the entire sort of, you know, <laughs> the magic world he's created for you. And then, then you're like, oh, it's just wires, isn't it? You know, like, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? Like, it's all just It's wires, wires and, and a twin that no one ever gets to see. <laughs> Do you know, an identical <laughs> twin that... Does half the stuff for him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the real talent of the show. I do remember. Uh, I can't remember which uh, magician this was, but he did a thing of a sus the flying lady suspending a lady in midair, and to prove that this woman was really flying, he got a child up from the audience, picked the child up under the uh, armpits, and held him up so he could look at the woman. And the child's got this look of amazement. Oh, my God. So everyone in the audience claps and goes, that's amazing. He's clearly fl made the lady fly. What he had done, the woman was suspended by wires. And as he picks the child up, he whispers to the child, if you tell anyone about the wires, I will fucking kill you. <laughs> and that's why the child looks so shocked, because he's just been threatened with death. <laughs> Oh, I thought you were going to say he like jabbed him with a safety pin or something. I guess that's not so bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's just like if you if you touch the wires, if you if you touch the wires, I'll fucking kill you. Wow. So that's why. It, so you know, sometimes it's not all clever. Yeah. Sometimes it's. I mean, that's really clever. It's just also really mean. You're not wrong. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Note to self: that works. Okay. Good. Good. Yeah. Good. <laughs> good to know. Yeah. <laughs> Right, chaps. Yeah. Let's wrap. Let's wrap up there. Unless anyone desperately has any more magician facts they want to get. I mean, out. I could, but I don't think we should. <laughs> yeah, let's leave it there for the yeah, moment. Fair enough. Um, okay, so the the last little bit we need to do before we we wrap up and we tell people where they can find Richard Sandling nailed the surname. Um, we've got a we've got to pick a title. Something that I forgot to do halfway through recording was write down potential episode names. So here's four. 
So, uh, option number one, the talkiest jokes you'll ever hear. <laughs> probably that one accurate, sounds quite nice, but probably but... not, not going to entice everyone in. <laughs> <laughs> Bit long, maybe. Won't fit on the apps. Um, similarly, uh, it makes no sense, but sounds like it should. I like it, but bit yeah, long. That's, that's... Um, and then these last two, really obviously from the magician's chat. Uh, magic isn't real. That's <laughs> <laughs> a bit depressing. <laughs> or just wires, in it. <laughs> <laughs> what do we think? I I think um, the laughter probably goes more towards it's just wires, in it. Just wires, in it. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah I'm gonna. Just draw wires, box isn't around it? That one. <laughs> just I mean, wires, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Because if you say magic isn't real, people are going to be like, "I wonder if they talk about magic." Yeah. Um, <laughs> just wires is a bit more intriguing. <laughs> just wires, Richard. <laughs> Richard, mate, thank you so much for your time. Um, I pleasure. hope this hasn't been traumatic for you. Um, you've laughed <laughs> at least three times, which I think is a win. Um, can you please just let people know where to find you? Um, let us know again what times the uh, the live stream shows are. You know, all that stuff. Yes, hello. Uh, Richard Sandling. Uh, you can find me at richardsandling.com uh, where there's everything you need to know is there. Or you can follow me on Twitter at, under, at squat underscore Betty. I am on Instagram as <laughs> The Sandling. Or you can find me on Facebook as Richard Sandling's Perfect Movie. Follow us, give us a like. Uh, that's where the information is about the live shows, which stream to Facebook 9 o'clock every Saturday during lockdown, 9 p.m. UK time. You can also, we have a front row situation where if you want to be part of the Zoom call and be in the audience, you can do that. And commissions for that are available on my Kofi Coffee Coffee Ko page. Uh, if you go to Richard Sandling and Coffee, Kofi Coffee dot co um, slash Richard Sandling and go to the commissions page, you'll be able to buy a ticket and be in the front row, hang out with us in the green room afterwards. It'd be lovely. Uh, other than that, just uh, Google me. I'm the only Richard Sandling. You know, fill your boots. <laughs> awesome. Amazing. Fill your sandals. Um, <laughs> fill your sandals go... and sit down at nine o'clock on a Saturday. Yes. <laughs> we are going to go over to the exclusive patron only mini sode now, Ooh. which I didn't forget we were recording. Because no, I wrote you didn't. It down. Well done. Thank you so much. Take it easy. Mess that up. Take it easy, yeah. ladies and gents. Have an advert, probably. Richard, thanks for coming on. We'll whoa, whoa. see you all soon, pod babies. Pod babies! Bye! Conversation hat. Podcast. Podcast. Conversation hat. Conversation hat. Podcast. 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 Podcast.